Welcome to this special episode of Deconstructing the Culture. I am your host, Elisa Steele, and today I have the honor of introducing you to a very special guest, Joy Villa. Joy, welcome to the program. Hi, Elisa. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you here. So a little bit about Joy. She is an unabashed, amazing conservative. She is never shy from sharing her strong views on American politics. She was appointed by Laura Trump to serve on the presidential campaign advisory board in 2017. And she has had multiple appearances on Fox News and has wowed diversified groups on her fresh approach to politics as a conservative woman of color. color. Plus, she has some amazing, very, very American-themed patriotic music that I'm excited, excited for us to talk a little bit about. So that's a little bit about Joy. We're super excited to have her here today. Joy, I know this is going to go diving right in, super mm-hmm. personal right away, but I want to ask you about your pro-life story. You're extremely pro-life. You've worn some amazing pro-life dresses to some big events. Can you tell me a little bit about your pro-life story and th- the story behind that? Absolutely. So I was, I was around 19 years old and I, I was in a really abusive relationship, emotionally, physically abusive. And, um, you know, he used to hit me, I used to try to hit him back and I thought that was okay, but it was awful. I mean, there was a lot of drugs. He was on drugs and, you know, I was smoking pot at the time and I found myself pregnant and I stopped all the drugs, of course, and stopped the drinking and tried to, to live a a sort of clean life. But what happened was when I went to get the pregnancy test, the nurse told me, you know, you're pregnant and we can take care of it easily. All you have to do is, you know, just get an abortion. It's quick. It's free. I've had several of them. My daughters have all had them. I mean, she was acting like she was talking about like having a chicken dinner. You know, it was like nothing to her. And I was very young and impressionable, impressionable. And my mom had passed away before that, around that time. So I was in a very delicate emotional position. And so when she said that you're pregnant and that I was actually like, whoa, life, you know, and then when she said the next sentence, so let's take care of it. You're too young. You can't handle this. It was, it was hard. I mean, she straight up pressured me to try to get an abortion. And I said, Uh no, I walked away and I said, I'm not going to do that. I don't believe in that. This is a life. I'm not going to punish my baby for being in a difficult situation. So as I said, after that, I tried to make it work with the father, but he ended up abusing me when I was four months pregnant and I called the cops and I was like, that's it. This is it. I I have to say no for the health of my baby, for the health of, you know, my future. And and so I said, but what am I going to do? You know, I don't have the father's help. I don't, I don't have a big family that was willing to like take care of my kid, you know, grandparents that would step in. I didn't have resources. I was flat broke. I was on my own. Wow. So we did is I prayed first and foremost, and I was babysitting at the time. I had had some friends who got me some jobs babysitting. And I'm crying and I'm praying, and I look down on the kitchen table, and there's this newspaper, and it says, Loving Home was looking to adopt. And it was an ad. And in an old-fashioned, you know, like, newspaper. (laughs) And I'd never seen those ads before. And it was like, Loving Home, Loving Family, we will take your baby. We would love to raise your child. Like, it's just a little ad. So I called that number and I and I worked with American Adoptions and oh. sent me with a woman on the phone. She was so nice. And, you know, I'm like sobbing. I don't know what to do. And she's like, listen, I was adopted. I'll help you through this process. It's great. I know my birth mom and I love her and I love my birth, my, my adopted parents. So it, that was really comforting to talk to someone who was now like 35, 40, whatever, was working with the adoption agency who had been adopted because that's always your fear like if you adopt out your child are they going to feel like they're not loved yeah. are they gonna feel like they're not cared for and she assured me she knows her birth mom and she's like if I was raised by my birth mom that would be a totally different life she's like I love the life I'm living and she's happy and, and she knows her mom was in a, in a hard situation the other fear I think a lot of women don't do adopting now is besides being pressured and not encouraged to do it, is that we feel like we're going to get shamed as birth moms. Like we're all crack addicts, you know, Mm -hmm. prostitutes. Like that wasn't my situation at all. But you feel like you're going to be looked at as sort of like the trash of society. How could you? How dare you? 
And in reality, it is the most beautiful thing you could absolutely do for your child. Rather yeah. than kill your kid, murder your child, your baby, which is what abortion is. But you, if you can't, you're in a situation where you can't raise, or you're not willing to, or you just, you can't make it work where you can raise that child. It is the most humane and beautiful thing. And I have an open adoption with my daughter. She calls me Mama Joy. Oh. Yeah, she loves me. She knows who she is, you know. Her parents love her. They love me. I've seen her. I visit her many times. So it, it's a situation that is very delicate, but I try to share as much as I can because I want girls to know. I want women to know this is an option out there. Adoption is life. You could have an open adoption or you could have a closed adoption, but I preferred, it was hard at first, but I wanted to know she was okay. And I want her to know that I loved her. And it is the most life-giving thing. I mean, it's not going to be easy to raise a parent. It's not easy. And I've heard from post-abortive women is the most horrible, I mean, to raise as a parent, it's not easy, but as post-abortive women is the most horrible pain to know that every year on that date, right, that your child could have been born or, you know, that, that could have been alive yeah. through a lot of pain and suffering. So, I mean, adoption is not, it's not easy. I don't try to pretend like, oh, just do adoptions easy. But it makes so much sense. It's the most beautiful and simple solution. You provide a child for parents who can't, who have everything in the world, but can't have a baby. And then you want to have everything in the world, but you have this baby that you don't know what to do with. And you don't know how to deal with this. And, and I know women and girls, they want to make the problem go away. You can't make the problem go away by boarding your child. You're putting pain and suffering on top of pain and suffering. Even through rape and incest, that's more pain and suffering on top of pain and suffering. And don't have the child pay for the sins of the father if you were raped or abused. So I'm staunchly pro-life. And I started sharing my story last year. And I've been working with this beautiful charity called SaveTheStorks.com. And we give free pregnancy tests and free stores. Yes. Have you heard of Save the Storks? Is... Yes. In fact, that's where we uh, first kind of met each other was at the Save the Storks ball in D.C. Right, right the night before the right. That's right. So that, I remember turning to you and being like, oh, my gosh, Joy, your dress is to die for. You had a beautiful Save the Storks dress on and you looked amazing in it. And it had basically Thanks. storks with little babies. And yeah, yeah I, right. I was really inspired that you were being so bold about as beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. Such a beautiful story, too. Wow. Great. Thank I you for sharing that. The wall. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I just want to share my story with yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. I want to share as much as I can. I want people to know adoption is a beautiful option, and you don't have to murder your child. You can give her life or him life, and you can enjoy life because life matters, and baby lives matter. And the more love and, and compassion we have for the unborn, the better our whole society is. When we start going into this culture of death, we destroy life. And kids are sad. Kids are depressed. Kids don't know what to do these days. And then they're told they're just animals and they're not, they're told there's no God. And there's this, this whole lack of creation going on in life. And to have a baby when you're pregnant, that's a creation. And it, it may is. not be this ideal situation, but that's a beautiful creation. It's a no. beautiful yeah, I love that you mentioned that, honestly. And as Christian women, we know that God is in control and he is always there. So maybe it wasn't our ideal way of bringing in a baby, but God had a plan. And that's the way he brought that baby. And it's just such a beautiful miracle. And it is. I love, I love your story. It's so inspiring. Thank you. Joy, now you yes. are like a number one charts YouTube um, I'm seeing iTunes, iTunes yeah. recording artists. You have beautiful music. Can you tell me about your music, your inspiration behind it, some of your favorite songs? I would, I would love to hear more about that. Totally. So my favorite, well, I, my new album that came out, came out last year. It's called Home Sweet Home. It's an EP. It's very patriotic. I sing the national okay. anthem okay. on it. Sure. I've got my song Make America Great Again, which was a smash hit and, and topped the charts on Amazon and iTunes. And, um, and I pre premiered it on Fox News, which was really great. So really? that's an album. Yes, there's a song called Lost, which is I, I once was lost in the world. Now I know. Now I know what I want to be. Now I know who I am. It's a very inspiring song. And poppy, fun. Um, it's just a very, it's, it's a very pop patriotic album with a little bit of country-ish flavor on some of the songs because the title song, Home Sweet Home, 
is about traveling the world, which I've done. I've done, I've been to 35 countries touring. It's amazing. Oh, traveling is the best way to get out of your bubble and see the rest of the world. We have to, to understand the world, to understand ourselves, we have to travel. I believe in traveling. So I've traveled 35 countries. I love it. I think everybody should travel, you know, find a discount ticket, go explore the world. But every country I've been to, I've loved, and I was always searching for like, oh, this could be like my new home, my new place. But every country doesn't measure up to my country, America. It just doesn't. America is the greatest country. The value of this country is insurmountable. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's life-giving. We have our constitution. We have our freedoms here. You know, we're a mixed hodgepodge of other cultures and that makes us incredible and beautiful. So that's what my song is about, Home Sweet Home. It's like, I've been here, I've been there. And that, but there's no place like Home Sweet Home. So yeah, that's Home Sweet Home, the EP. It's on iTunes, it's on Amazon. It's been doing very well in the charts. And my first EP, I make the static hit number one on all the charts, including Billboard Rock and Alternative. I'm really proud about that because that's a, that's that was made created in 2014, but it started charting in 2017. Wow! After, yeah, after I made my appearance at the Grammys in my Trump dress, and then my fans found me, and then every other album I put out, every other song has been charting since then. It's amazing, so, and it helps that you have a phenomenal voice. Truly, I, I've listened to you. these these songs that you're talking about, and they're beautiful, and you have an amazing, powerful voice. Thank you so much, Elise. I appreciate that. It's something I've loved to do for since I was a kid, singing dancing and acting. You know, I've grown up doing musical theater, so I've always been performing. I've always been speaking my mind and becoming political, being a Trump supporter in Hollywood, which is not easy. It's just been something that it's sort of evolved into who I am. Like, this is who I am now. And my fans tell me they appreciate a voice to speak up for them. You know, with all the leftist extremists saying, let's abort babies in nine months old. Oh, it's so tragic. Now. It is tragic and it's evil and it's wrong and it's taking over culture to where it's this lifelessness, you know, and I think it's the overall thing is you don't matter. You're just a part of the state. Just do what we say. And it's this weird control mechanism. Agreed. Agreed. Media, right? Movies, TV. It's like, oh, but everything. see, then you mentioned media, but then you're the conservative voice in this area of media, which I love. And you right. did mention being a conservative in Hollywood. What has that been like? Have you felt like that's blacklisted you from some opportunities or do you feel like it's actually helped you? What is that? I mean, and also what made you decide to do that? Because I feel like that was fairly recent in the last couple of years. What made you decide I'm going to come out strongly and, and be political in Hollywood? It's funny because my journey is one that's not typical. I think nobody's journey really is, but I was raised conservative, you know, strong conservative Christian background. My dad was a preacher. We watched Fox News all the time on TV. But I sort of went away from that. I voted for Obama his first year. And, you know, I wanted a black president. I believed in change. I believed in hope. I wanted that change for America. And I also didn't want to do what my parents did. You know, I wanted to sort of set myself apart. I've always been someone who's not afraid to stand alone, set myself apart. I'm a vegan. You know, I, I dress cool, crazy, different. I've always dressed crazy and wild. Ever since I was a kid, I have tattoos. So I grew up, I'm very individual. And politics wasn't the entertainment mass consumption product it is today. Like politics has really become big with Trump. And, it has. To it. <laughs> and it's also become more political. It used to be that you kind of separated the two. Now they're deeply yeah. intertwined. It is. It's like now it, almost everyone's expected to say something about politics. It's, it's more fun and more interesting than some movies or TV. You know, <laughs> it's like a, a massive, amazing character that people love to watch. He is a reality TV right? character. That is for sure. Yeah. So I wasn't really into politics. And then Trump came on the scene and I got really into him. I didn't like him at first, but then I started watching his speeches and listening to what he said in his debates with Hillary. And I was very anti-Hillary. And then I was like, you know what? This guy is it. This is the real deal. Trump is like really what he's saying he's going to do. He's going to do what he says. I believe in him. I, I trust in what he's going to do and what he's going to say. And I hope, you know, he was a former Democrat becoming a Republican. Incredible story. Have a billionaire with kids who are super successful. Amazing, right? Um, just an awesome dude who's had a TV show, a huge number one TV show, who so built it higher. During this last 
election, that's when you were just like, hey, you know what? I want to say something. I want to get involved. Yes. And what what was the backlash? Like, was, there, was it as bad as you thought it would be? Or did you have any crazy haters? Or was it mostly supportive and, and goodwill? Oh, it was crazy. I mean, when I by the time I became a Trump fan, I, w- I was just in time to vote for him. So I voted for him in November. And then I saw the backlash after he got elected in January, the whole his election. And then people were saying, let's bomb the White House. So I was like, this is not OK. So I'm going to make a statement. I'm wearing a Trump dress. You know, a designer designed a Trump dress for me. I splashed the news for sure. That's right. Walked the red carpet at the Grammys in 2017, as I had walked two years earlier. And it was the most crazy amount of hate and vitriol I've ever seen. I mean, people wanted to kill me. I got hundreds of death threats. Oh my gosh. Racist slurs. Um, it was, it was insane, but I was protecting this bubble for all the love. I did not expect that either. I really didn't know what to expect. I was like, listen, I'm just going to, I'm going to spring it on them secretly. We're a white jacket over the whole thing with my plan. I was, was just do this. I'm going to shock and all, but I really want to support the president because he needs support. I'm going to be that rebel with a cause for the president. And boom, it just, it ended up being viral. I, went, I became a viral sensation with my Fox News every week, doing tons of interviews. And I did it again in my pro-life dress because now I'd been like, after a year of that abuse, also, but also the year of love and a community really coming out for me and amazing, incredible creators and different people having me on their show, people like you, do amazing media, new media, right? Alternative media, which is what we need. Thank it, you. Yeah, I found this community and I didn't look back. And I've done tons, like tons of speaking engagements and concerts and different, uh, you know, events, like say the Storks Ball, and yeah. CPAC and seeing hundreds of thousands of, well, I wouldn't say hundreds of thousands, but I would say thousands of people who came up and, and took photos with me and doing the March for Trump right after in 2017 and just doing one event after another and finding grounding in this community. It gave me the strength to keep coming out and to stay conservative. And now I'm blacklisted from some events, but I'm not blacklisted from Hollywood. I don't believe you can blacklist from Hollywood, not these days, because there's so much new media coming out. We have the movie Unplanned from Mm. Abby Johnson, who I met. Yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful film. I've seen it pre screening at CPAC this year. I mean, we have pro life films. We have Gosnell that has come out. We have media that has come out that is, so it's not media is not bad, but it's that leftist, mainstream, anti Trump, anti Christian, anti family, anti woman, really, anti child media that is just shoving a bunch of crap down our throats. And we're like, this is it. Young people are stepping up. You know, like we're millennials, right? And we're young. Yeah. You might be Generation Z. Now you're I, I just barely make the cut for millennial. millennial. Just barely. Just, last, I think it's the, like the last year of it, but yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Well, we're like, we're the new, you know, we're the new leaders and there's more conservatives than ever out there. Or so at, we, least, yeah. at least those conservatives, I believe at least are being more vocal because I feel yeah. like our country has been very primarily conservative for most of you know since its founding I would say but Mm -hmm. we're becoming more vocal we've stopped being I feel like in the past we've been like you mind your business I'll mind my business and it's been the the liberal left being so outspoken well I think I think we're fed up I think us conservatives are, are tired of the monopoly on on media and so we're coming in and that's why I'm excited to see things happen, like with Blaze TV and CRVT mm-hmm. and bought CRE, whatever. CRTV, yeah. yeah which CRTV. is CRTV. The Blaze. It's Blaze TV now. Yes, it's Blaze right. TV now. But th- they've become a conservative powerhouse now, and it's much harder to shut that down than mm-hmm. than previously. Absolutely, it's huge now. You're right. We're we're so outspoken, and so I'm. You know, this two years ago has been my conversion back to being a, a conservative, and I'm proud. I'm a registered Republican. I'm a Republican delegate, proud to be a Republican, a Trumplican, and I love the new voice and the new freshness that is in the air. So it's exciting times. And I won't stop in Hollywood. You know, you're going to see more things from me, more music, more acting in movie and TV, because now I'm going back into acting. Oh, I love that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Scored a couple film roles that are going to be coming out soon. So it's it's exciting. I think to be a culture changer, you have to be in culture. So I would not distance myself. You know, I could easily do it, just be in plays or off off Broadway. I don't have to be in this 
arena, but I've chosen to be in this arena and I'm not going to give up the fight. We're going to change yeah. it inside. No, I think you're absolutely right to, to, to be a culture changer. You do have to be within it. And I think that's why I, I think you're, spot on to get more conservatives into Hollywood and maybe I, I've heard a lot of people say well maybe we'll start our own Hollywood that's not very likely that that's actually going to happen so I think infiltrating our own and finding our own branches and bringing in our own values is really important mm -hmm. I love that you're doing that so you've had a lot of creative dresses I'm curious to know you told us a little bit of the background on your Trump dress how you also had this other beautiful pro-life dress and you to my understanding you hand painted Yes. A wedding dress. And I want to know what's the inspiration behind that one. And then you recently did a build the wall dress at the latest uh, in the last couple of months. So in 2018, as you mentioned, my is a Pronovius, which is Spanish label wedding gown that I hand painted. That was my vision. And I had a, a, a crown, the Miss America crown, mm -hmm. right? New York, a crystal crown. And I hand painted my gown and my purse. And the gown shows a baby. And it was actually my baby when I was pregnant. And I, I painted that painting when I was eight months pregnant. So I recreated it on the dress. Wow, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. That is so That's touching. That's my daughter. And on my purse, I painted Choose Life. And so I walked into the Grammys, which is it's not a pro-life organization. I mean, you would say for the most part, the people there are very not pro-life. You know, Planned Parenthood's done a lot of events with people there, unfortunately. But I walked in there proudly with my head held high in a beautiful dress. And I wanted to share my story. And that's exactly what I did. I shared People Magazine printed it, uh, sent it out, and Fox News sent it out. And all, you know, Washington Post sent out this story that I told you at the yeah. this interview. And I wanted to come out with it, saying, I am conservative. That Yes, that's a part of me. But what does that really mean? Well, one of the stands I take personally, not politically, but also I'm involved in the politics behind the scenes, pushing for legislature, but I am pro-life because I have experienced that. And I'm not just some high horse saying, oh, just keep your baby. You know how they try to paint us. I'm like, no, I've yeah. been suffering and suffering that choice, that decision. And trust so me, personal to you. Not a choice. Pro-choicers want you to have an abortion, 100%. That's how they make their money. That's how they, 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 you know, they put this lie out there. But I chose life, and I would never condemn another woman for her decisions, but choosing life is the best thing you will ever do for the health of yourself, your sanity, your child, you know, for this beautiful baby that was created to live a beautiful life just like we were. So that, that was the inspiration behind 20, 2018. I said, I'm going to start. I'm going to just blast my – I had been putting my a little bit of my story on um, social media, and that's mm -hmm. what – idea the re the reaction the response was so positive and people were telling me like oh my gosh I want to do adoption I'm pregnant I don't want to do abortion anymore wow so it was beautiful so I was like okay this is a ministry so I'm going to use my voice at the Grammys to do this so then flash forward to this year's Grammys yes and I had an, an idea a vision to do a wall dress and I worked with designer Desi Allinger of Desi Designs Couture and she was actually going to build me a different dress because we had another design planned and then okay. Like two weeks before the Grammys, I flipped it on her. I called her and I was like, Desi, can you design a wall dress for me? Because I <laughs> saw, exactly, I saw the pushback that the president was getting on building this wall. And I believe in building this wall. I mean, one in three women are sexually assaulted trying to get into this country illegally. The thousands mm -hmm. of kids who are human trafficked by coyotes trying to, you know, getting into this country illegally. It's true. It's 13. I mean, all the angel moms and dads who've had kids murdered from three three-time offenders who should have been pushed back in their country. And it's not oh, yeah. about race or color. It's about protecting. No, our no, not at all. I'm actually a Mexican citizen. I was born in Mexico what? and no. I have a, I know I look very white, but my, no, but I my, know you were born in Mexico. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I have dual citizenship now and oh. obviously I, I claim being an American through and through, but yeah. the truth is, is, you know, a wall is what makes a country sovereign. It's, it's that's what proclaims your sovereignty from the That's rest right. of the world. And on top of that, too, is, you know, my mom, she's had firsthand experiences. You know, she's she's an American citizen, born and raised in Colorado. But she has had some terrifying experiences crossing the border back and forth, being stopped by the mafia, being searched at gunpoint. You know, I've had cousins who were 
ransom, kidnapped, ransomed, and, and then killed from the drug lords down there. I mean, it's truly horrendous. And the last thing we want is no security from that. So I, I'm 100% on board. Or anything, like you said, nothing to do with race. People in Mexico are bad. A lot of my family still lives in Mexico, but it has everything to do with stopping the tri- crime, stopping the sexual trafficking, and, mm-hmm. and proclaiming your sovereignty. This is what makes us a nation. So I'm a huge supporter of the wall as well. That is amazing. Elisa, have you shared this story? <laughs> I have. Okay, because this that's powerful. I mean, you have reality on it that a lot of people don't. Your family having been directly hit by the criminals down there that the wall will prevent from coming over. And like you said, you're dual citizenship. So you're a Mexican citizen and American citizen, and you should be able to travel freely and safely. Your family should be freely and safely be able to get through. Your cousins who live in Mexico want to become American citizens. They should be able to come through safely and go mm-hmm. through the system. I mean, I also think we need more help with the immigration system. Agreed. It should be it's harder. very broken right now very broken and Trump inherited this, you know, it's been happening for the last 25, 30 years. I mean, at the same time, we need to make an easier path to citizenship for all immigrants and not for illegals though. I mean, illegals shouldn't be like, Oh, you're here. Let's, let's help you. Like, I think it was Obama, whatever this law was like, yeah. Oh, let's, let's no, let's send them back to their country. Okay. They already legal, they already trespassed, but let's make an easier path to citizenship for the people who are in line at this moment waiting their turn, who filed the paperwork, who hired the lawyers, yeah. who blood, sweat, and tears, years trying to come here. Maybe their husband it's a or very, here. Yeah, it's a very long process. For them. Yeah, their kids Even are- getting my dual citizenship was insanely difficult. It took my mother literally hours and hours and hours of standing in line to get my citizenship. So if I'm just thinking, you know, if my mom can do that to, you know, go through the process legally, then the least that other people can do is, is exactly. do the same. So- exactly not fair to jump the line for other yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. I love, love I loved your dress. It was fantastic. Thank Very you. well put together. And you brought in your tiara as well in a different exactly. and whole other way. <laughs> that was like exactly it's like becoming my thing having tiaras. This one was like a, a um a Statue of Liberty metal tiara and I had barbed wire on the shoulders. Did you see that? Yep, yep. it was <laughs> fantastic. Was and the wall dress I revealed it after wearing the metal sheath because they were saying well it's gonna be made out of steel. So I had the steel wall, and then I took the steel wall off and revealed the brick wall, which said... <laughs> Very oh, clever. Yeah, and people loved it, but then people hated it. Actually, I got 10 times more hate, 10 times more hate this year than I did really? previous years. Absolutely. And I got the most horrendous rape threats last year for being pro-life. I mean, just the most disgusting oh, racist I'm sure. things. I, uh, I've seen some scenarios. But this year, I got people screaming and yelling at me in person, people saying nasty things um, in person at the Grammy. Oh, man. Saying Trump's a traitor, you're a traitor, and take that thing off, and all. I mean, it's just, but I just laugh. They don't really do anything. They just can use words, you know? And I mean, when I go out, I have to travel with a security guard. I'm sure. I I mean, that's just how it is. But I'm not complaining. I love this life. And I'm so grateful for the people who've written me and told me. They love what I do. They love that I'm I'm out there, you know, standing up. And really, I'm I'm being a voice of 65 million people is what I think. It's not yeah. just me, you know, but mm-hmm. I'm uniquely in a position to use my voice and stand up for rights. And I believe in it. If I ever stopped believing it, I wouldn't do it. But I believe in this wall. I believe in this country, like the sovereignty of our nation. I believe in limited government, less taxes. Yeah. Like, be free. Have and I jobs. think... And that's what I love about your music, honestly, is is we hear that. We hear that passion in your voice. We hear that love for country in your voice. And it is just so beautiful. So, Joe, I have one last question for you before we have to say goodbye. Is what advice would you give to someone who wants to bring politics in their work world? Would you recommend it? What would you say they need to prepare themselves for mentally, physically, Mm. spiritually? What would you, what yeah. advice would you give to someone who wants to bring politics into their work world? Because and, and just to give you a little background on that, with this, um, you know, New York law on abortion, we saw a lot of influencers on Instagram and the social media sphere who ordinarily would never talk about politics. They were focusing on yoga, or they're focusing on fitness, or yeah. or painting or whatever their 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 little niche was but then all of a sudden they're bringing in 
politics because this was such a wake-up call. I want to know, as someone who's in Hollywood, you were definitely in the public eye. What kind of advice would you give to someone who, who wants to bring in politics? It's a great question. I didn't know that about influencers standing up more now. That's good. That's the one good thing about these really extremist laws is it'll wake up normally wouldn't say anything. We'll go, wait a second. I may be a Democrat, but I may be even pro-choice, but this is, this is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So (laughs) yeah, it's, I mean, this is the thing. Make sure you're making an informed decision because you're, when you walk into this arena, it's not pretty. There's sharks in the water. They're mm-hmm, going to mm-hmm. to you. I don't want people losing their job because they're going to wear a Trump hat at work. Like that's not, unfortunately, that's a very real yeah, thing. We don't want them to that's lose their I livelihood. Work. And I get people asking me this, but this is how you can do it. You want to do it in a way that is very friendly towards what your opposition, whoever you're talking to. This is how I broach the subject. If somebody starts talking about Trump, I say, you know, he's really not doing a bad, bad thing. I think he's doing a good job. He's not really doing a bad job. I mean, I do something very like conservative minded, like very like, you know, conservative as I mean, not too extreme, Yeah. very like just mellow, kind of relaxed. You know, you start off that conversation, you gauge their response because if you're dealing with someone who's crazy, you don't want to continue that conversation, especially if it's a boss or coworker, they could make trouble for you. But if somebody who's open-minded, most people are pretty open-minded and will listen to you. You go, I really don't think he's doing that bad of a job. They go, what? What do you mean? Like, oh, <laughs> the this, shock. This and this. Yeah, that's how I'm mm-hmm. going for drivers or I'm staying in line somewhere and I hear over your conversation. Yeah. He's really not doing that bad of a job. And they go, wait, what? So, well, yeah, like yeah. my experience, you know, you can talk about your experience. That's why I say to everyone, like my experience is under Obama, my cousins, my black cousins were without jobs. So I'm Argentinian, Italian on my dad's side and black American, Native American on my mom's side. So my black cousins were without jobs and some of my extended family was on welfare under Obama. But now under Trump, they have jobs and some of them are ex-military, you know what I mean? Veterans who now are working and thriving and succeeding, a lot of military in my family who couldn't do that under Obama. So Mm -hmm. under Trump, Mm -hmm. lower unemployment rates for black Americans, Hispanic Americans, female Americans, millennials, that says something to me because now my family can survive. It's true. And I say those stories and people go, oh, well, that's true. He is doing a good job with the economy. You know what? And I think that's one thing we can all kind of agree on is the economy. Because for me personally, um, and a lot of people know this about me, I was not a Trump supporter fan. I was a Ted Cruz backer. I really really had my faith in Ted Cruz. I know. So many people love Ted Cruz. Um, So I did actually, I didn't vote for Trump because at the time Mm -hmm. um, I had, you know, my questions about him and Honestly, when it came down to it, I just, I, I didn't like his, his moral or lack of moral life. That mm-hmm. really bothered me. Um, right. So this time around, you know, if the election was held today, I'd probably vote on him simply because in actions and on paper, he's done a really phenomenal job. I'd probably give him, you know, like an A minus. Other than some of his stuff on tariffs, he's doing a phenomenal job. Nice. But so something that I'll kind of bring in, like you said, is saying, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe you do have your questions about him, but look around you everyone around you is doing better. The economy is doing better. And so the proof is in the pudding there. Absolutely. And you find those agreeable things. It's totally true. It's funny because like if I had been, when I was conservative, I would have voted for Ted Cruz. I didn't even look at him this election because I was not looking at concern. I was like, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. But when I look at Ted Cruz now, I was like, oh, if I'd really looked at Ted Cruz, if I had been like back in the day when, when I was with my parents, I'm sure my dad would have voted for Ted Cruz. I'm sure. Well, I don't, I think my dad, well, because when he didn't become the, uh, my dad would have probably supported Ted Cruz up until obviously Trump became the, the Republican like the primary. primary. Yeah, yeah. Primary. And then I think my dad would have loved Trump a hundred percent, but it's true because Trump is the outlier. He's not, you know, just a little bit to touch on that. He's not, he's not really conservative. You know what I mean? I mean, he he's very conservative values, but he didn't live a very conservative, more low key type of life. He's he's a rebel rouser and he always has been. And to me, he's not in a great way, you know, sleeping with other people. He's not Pence. That's why he is Mike Pence, who's a. No, I like Pence more. I do have to say. (laughs) Well, yeah, for someone like you, who's like a lifelong conservative who has like very, very conservative, conservative values. Me, I'm a little bit of liberal on some issues. You know, I'm a little bit different on some issues. I'm a little bit grab back things, but I wouldn't be a, I was an independent, registered independent. I wouldn't call myself a Republican if it wasn't for Trump. And that's me. 
he speaks to my brand of conservatism, my more, more out there, more wild pick and choose certain issues and a little bit more like live and let live. You know, I, morals are extremely important, but I also don't want the government dictating what morals I should leave. So I'm very like more like into liberty, personal liberty. Obviously crimes should be, you should go to jail, but I don't want like what we're having going on with this hate speech stuff, which is uh, considered moral to some people. You no. can see a tricky situation. I don't want mandated religious religions for anybody or lack of religion because that gets tricky. I want religious freedom. I want the constitution. So it's it's a little bit yeah. like I want that I want that freedom for all individuals to practice what they believe in. And I actually truly want that. I really agree on. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, but conservatives are different. That's what people don't understand. People have been looking at Democrats forever. Oh yeah, they're different. Yeah, conservatives are the truly diverse, different bunch. You and I are going to agree on a lot of things and disagree on some th other things. And, and that's, that's okay. We come together on our common side. Totally. And that's totally fine because we also, we agree on the most important fundamental things. We want to protect life. We want less taxes, right? We want to build the wall. I'm assuming you want less taxes. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you're Ted Cruz girl, because Ted Cruz like abolished the IRS. I fell in love with Ted Cruz when he said abolish the IRS. I was like, <laughs> where were you during the presence? I didn't even see. I wasn't, see, I, that's the thing is like, if you're not exposed to that, now I'm so much more diversified. I, when I was independent, I was basically a liberal. I had to walk away. I had to walk away from this liberal ideology that I didn't even know permeated me so much because I'm in Hollywood. It was all around me. Now I'm exposing that, but now I expose myself to conservative outlets. I'm reading other sources. I'm looking at other things. And yeah. I'm like, and I do think it's important to do both sides. For me, I don't read just conservative outlets. I read the New York Times. I read CNN. Right. I think it's important to have a, yeah. a balanced diet, a balanced you diet. Do. Of news. Yeah, because you also need to realize we don't want to be in the echo chamber, we, especially if you're in media or speaking out. How do other people think? How do other people see that issue? And you want to use common sense. Like just because Trump would say something, I wouldn't just automatically believe him. I would look at the issue myself. But I love his firebrand, fire like firebrand brand of conservatism. <laughs> that is like, to me, very George Washington, very like revolutionary war. Like, let's just get it, get it done. Boom. No buts about it. So I think in that way, he is. Well, I love your fiery brand. I think you're fantastic. And I love that you're rocking the red today, too. Oh, yeah, I got to, you know. Yeah. Joy, my last, last question for you is how can people find you on the Internet? Can they reach out to you for speaking? Where can people find you? Yeah, you can go to joyvilla.com. You can book me for speaking engagements. I love to share my story. I love to talk about being a conservative in Hollywood, being pro-life in Hollywood, what that means to be conservative now in 2019 as a woman of color. All different things. I don't shy away from it. And you can go to joyvilla.com. You can email email me joy at joyvilla.com. Find me on Instagram at joyvilla. On YouTube, I have great YouTube content at Miss Joyvilla, M I S S Joyvilla on YouTube. And was it Facebook, Joyvilla Music, and Twitter? I'm always on Twitter, tr you know, triggering people <laughs> <laughs> at joy underscore villa. Perfect, perfect. Joy Villa, thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Elise. This has been an absolute pleasure. I love this. And keep being a conservative babe. <laughs> Woo! Joy Villa, actually, I have to ask you one more question that just popped sure. in my head. Would you call yourself a conservative babe? Oh, heck yeah. Awesome. I'm definitely a conservative babe. I <laughs> love that you're putting conservative babe together because we need more love. Conservative babe forever. Woo! There you have it. Joy Villa is a conservative babe. Yeah.